Does this look familiar? Okay. We can talk through this a little bit together. The first thing we're going to have to do is draw a reasonable Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. So let's see if we know how to draw the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. There you go. If you remember enough general chemistry, you should be able to figure this out by counting the number of valence electrons, but it's probably easier just to memorize that this is the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. So there's a double bond on both sides of the carbon. So this is what carbon dioxide looks like. And now we should really be able to predict what's going to happen based on previous principles. We should be able to draw a reasonable mechanism here, even though we've never seen these precise reagent, this precise reagent before. So let's draw what would be, what would be a reasonable reaction between our grid yard and our carbon, and our, uh, carbon dioxide. Even though we have never seen maybe a reaction with carbon dioxide, we should be able to predict what's going to happen here. We know that grid yards are good nucleophiles. Why is it reasonable for this carbon here to act like an electrophile? Because it is delta positive. Yeah, it's delta positive. Yeah, because it's bonded to two oxygens. Just for the heck of it, there's another good reason why this would be electrophilic, besides the, the delta positive. Because if you do resonance functioning, a full positive charge. So now, we, besides looking for the delta positives based on electronegativity, we have another way of predicting electrophiles, which is thinking about different resonance structures. So there's another, in fact, there's a couple of resonance structures where there's a positive charge on this carbon. So this is a reasonable reaction. Make sure you don't add or drop carbon, so it might help to number here to get the right number of carbons. Why do we have to add the H3O plus in a separate step? Why can't we just put it in together with the carbon dioxide? Yeah, we know that acids destroy organometallics. We have to keep organometallics away from acids until they've done their job or they get destroyed. Actually, it, it might also get messed up with the carbon dioxide here too. There's a reaction there. But anyway, we don't put H2O plus in the same place as uh, this. In fact, what would be a good solvent here? Remember, we want to use something that's not protic, an aprotic solvent like maybe THF is a good solvent for that first step. All right, well, this is another real important way of forming carboxylic acids. I believe it's called carbonation. Uh, carbonation. When would you think to use this on a synthesis? Well, this is especially good if you want to make a carboxylic acid with one extra carbon. Notice that, that not only do we make a carboxylic acid, but we added one extra carbon to the original substrate over here because the carbon dioxide only has one carbon. So a good time to think of using these on a synthesis problem is if you're trying to make a carboxylic acid that has one more carbon than the original molecule started with.